إن الشخص المطلوب غير موجود حاليا. أرجاء المحاولة لاحقا. The person you are calling is currently not available. Please try later. الو الو كيف كيمان تمام اهلا حباب كيف حالك والله تمام الحمد لله كيف الاخبار الحمد لله انت مشغوله دلوقتي وين والله يا ايمان انت براكي عارفه لا شفت زي مشغوله وقاعد يعملوا لي في شعري ويعملوا لي في ده بديك التليفون بعد ما اخلص من شعري واخلص من ده My name is Iman Marghani. I'm Sudanese Egyptian, born and raised in Doha, Qatar. Two weeks ago, I set out to make a documentary about a Sudanese woman who bleaches her skin. My intention at the time was to follow and speak with someone who uses these products just to understand why. Why does she feel the need to use them? When was she introduced to them? And what does that mean for other people who might feel the need to change themselves, might feel like they are not good enough, and feel like they don't fit in? And after searching for a long time for someone to speak to me about this topic, I met Habab. لكن تصويرك ده اصلا من اول بدايه ما كده حتى لو الزول داري يعمل فيلم داري يعمل طريقه الفيلم دي يعني مرات في حاجات كده يعني مثلا انت قلتي انا شايله شنطتي لا ما كده once we put the camera in front of her everything completely changed she didn't give us the time that we needed she was very dismissive. When I first met Habab, she told me about a skin bleaching cream she uses called Subamayo Khamsin. It is a cream that is used on dead bodies when they are undergoing an autopsy. Wallahi, who taban ala hasab al wahda yani. على حسب الوحدة الأساسا هي دار تعمل كريم ما دار تعمل كريم يعني في ناس بيعملوا في ناس ما بيعملوا يعني وإنتي أنا طبعا بعمل يعني يكن الطبيعة زيها ما في يعني يعني بعمل خلطات يكن شنو ما مضرة وإنتي يعني هي غيرت كلامها قالت يا yeah. yeah. it was just hard because it's like the moment I walk through that door I felt like this woman was antagonized by me. And no, yani, okay, 
Is it, is maybe it maybe I'm, maybe I'm the wrong you're... maybe I'm the wrong person to make this film. عشان تعرف هي كرد بتقولي أنت أصلاً ما فهمة كلامنا بتاع السودانيين وأنت أصلاً ما سودانية. And when I would ask her to do something for him, she's like بطلي حركاتك تحت المصريين دي. Like it's it's hard for me too. At the end of the day, whether I like it or not, I'm Sudanese too. You know. Yeah. Like that's what that's the frustrating thing about making this film. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's like... It's like I don't mean to come off like that, but like... It's because people have pushed me so much for not being Sudanese enough or whatever that I, that I can't make... I can't talk about something that has affected me. And... Because I'm not like pure blooded or whatever you want to call it, and like I come off as like a master and everyone's my slave. And when in reality, I feel probably the same amount of pain that she does. Like, I, I feel like I don't fit in. And yeah, making this film has been really hard. It's actually been really, really hard. <laughs> uh, um, sorry, um, when is Habab available? Oh, Habab, she got, uh, going to Sudan. She take on vacation. She this left. morning, she left at five o'clock. Five in the morning, yes. she left? Going through this journey now, I am reminded of when I was younger and in school. I am reminded of my teachers and the things that they taught me. لا فرق بين عربي وأعجمي إلا بالتقوى. كلكم لآدم وآدم من تراب. For a brief moment. These things made me feel like I belonged to something. Like I was one with something. But I wasn't. I remember when I was 13 years old, one of my aunts had given me skin bleaching cream as a gift. It made me feel really bad that she did that, but I still ended up using them. Because when she gave them to me, a part of me felt like I needed to use them. Like something was wrong with me and I had to fix it. This is me and my sisters when we were in Egypt. 
that's me here. I got into like the super weird phase where I would just drench myself in black clothing and band t-shirts and just to try and distract anyone from the fact that I'm Sudanese or Egyptian or anything. A lot of my friends um, in school who I got on with were, they were white or lighter skinned, lighter than I am at least. Um, also because I found it hard to connect with Sudanese people or Egyptian people. So, as much as I tried to integrate from a young age, and it was hard because, like, you know, like, it made me feel like I couldn't express myself. I always had to be, like, on. I always had to be careful and not show myself too much, so I would, like, not speak, not speak up, really, and just... Oh, I love this photo. It's my dad, that's me, that's my eldest sister, Lena. عشان أول مرة لما عدنا مع بعض وتقابلنا ويعني طريقة كلامها يعني بالنسبة لي أنا ف... اللي أنا فهمته واللي هي قالته إنه الواحد بيغير نفسه عشان يعني يطلع فوق في المجتمع ويعرس ومش عارفة إيه فأنا I didn't realize it was something that affected me to this degree which it does يعني أنا I think إنه يعني الـ 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 الإنسان اللي عنده قوة شخصية و personality ما مفروض يتأثر بهذه الأشياء وبالذات إنه الشخص مفروض يكون متوقع هذه الأشياء فدي الأهمية بتاعة الدوكيومنترز زي دي بس أنا ما بفتكر إنه أي دوكيومنترز إن شاء الله لو عملتوا مليون دوكيومنتر حتغير حتى خلي الأشياء دي تختفي مش هتختفي لأنه دي مرتبطة بنفس البشرية you cannot change it بس التوعية أهمية إنه بتعلم الناس كيف يتعاملوا مع مثل هذه الأشياء سواء so on the negative or on the positive side, side فدي أهمية التوعية بالأشياء دي إنه بتعلم الناس كيف يتعاملوا معها مش هتخليها تختفي من, من العالم ما أظن I feel very lost right now. Talking to my dad, I felt like that was going to give me a resolution, but he was just trying to protect me, I guess. Talking about how this is something that happens all the time, which is true, but I already knew that, and it didn't help. Um, I'm not really sure what to do. Um, it's very hard to try and describe a disease to people when they don't believe that it exists. But it does, and it's all around us. And I felt it all throughout my journey when I kept asking myself, am I really crazy or are people really that blind? I haven't found a straight answer to what any of this means and I may never find one. But just try for a very brief moment to break the culture of silence and just listen. A 
A friend of mine who has a PhD and is a political activist and considers herself politically aware still calls black people Abid. And when I comment on what she says, she just tells me that's just the word we use. It doesn't have any connotations. People think that racism doesn't exist because we don't see police dogs biting black protesters on the street and because Nelson Mandela became president. But it's more common now than it has ever been in the Middle East. One time I was walking with my ex who was darker than me. A man came up to us, spat at us, and called us disgusting. When I was younger, I was dating a fellow Egyptian, but he was a lot darker skinned than I was. And one time I was at their house and I overheard him and his mother speaking. And his mother told him, I don't like her as a person, but at least your children won't be as dark skinned as you are. First time I experienced racial profiling, I was with a friend of mine who's white and we were queuing up for this place. We reached the entrance, they check his ID and let him in and then the receptionist turns her hat to me and asks me if I have a membership because it's an exclusive member's place. Elementary and middle school was very hard for me because I was very different from the other kids because I was darker than them, my hair was different. And they'd be like, you guys are nothing. All of you guys, all of you Sudanese people are nothing more than slaves. The girl that used to bully me a lot, I, I, the girl straight up scarred me to the point where I went out of school for a month. The words that scarred me till this day, it's very hard. <laughs> 